Oh, good. But they're fighting with Kevin. This little man's. Ah! Oh, sweet womp. Look at those folds. Oh, my God. Not normal wild owl behavior. Skip it about and done. I'll just get 50 crocodiles. I'm gonna make you pay for what you did to them cappy bars. Good morning, everybody. It's a new day, and I got another call about a little baby screech owl that was here in Waco. Oh my god. Are you okay, Bigger Tin? Why why are you so excited today? But today somebody in Bellmead, which is right by Waco, found a little baby screech owl that was concussed last night. It just doesn't stop, does it? But good morning, big owls. But he's probably concussed and dehydrated, so we're gonna have to give him a little bit of water or inject some fluid. And then give him some food and put him in a dark little area until we can take him to all things wild. This flight pen is basically done, and I haven't fenced in the bottom yet. But this is basically twice as big as the fox enclosure, and we're gonna be able to have tons of little owls in here whenever this boy is finally done. The pibbins love to just hang out here and eat little seeds, and they'll regularly go on laps around the property throughout the day. Also, I'm waiting for the lady that found the owl to send me a dang address, so I can go get them. The cappies are doing well, and I finally figured out how to use the sprinkler system again. And only a couple of the sprinklers are broken back here. Good morning, the baby. How are you today, my beautiful little baby boy? She is also very friendly now, and she lets me shake her little hand. I don't know how the goats keep getting in here, but they're fighting with Kevin now. This is annoying. Hey, it's me, Purple Boy. I ate the yellow guy. <laughs> Please like this video right now. But this is a couple hours in the future, you guys. This pond is already looking a little bit better now that the geese are gone. But this is my main pond. As you can see, it's doing much nicer. Also, look at that. Whoa. Look how clear the water is now, you guys. And look at all the cichlids. And there's my catfish. But this is my other pond, you guys. And I'm still waiting on Aquascape to get back to me on potentially redoing this one as well. And because Petunia was getting bullied, she lives out here by the pond full time. Now. And potentially dangerous. Oh, the baby, please stop, stop. All oh, these guys are really uppity today. Let him chase them around, that's so funny. Kevin does not like the goats. Look at him, he just headbutted Kevin right in the chest. And also to everyone who says, oh, Uncle Ben, that's a really nice emerald green pond you have there. They have nice clean water right here at all times. Kevin and this little guy are really going at it and I have a feeling that Kevin might lose this battle. Good morning, Kevin. Have you been getting bullied by the ram, sir? Have you been getting bullied by that guy? Goat buck, Kev. Obviously, as you can see, the goats are supposed to be in here. Kevin really doesn't like this bad boy. Look at, oh, they're going at it, you guys. Oh, do you see that fish jump back there? All right, time for Uncle Ben to intervene. Get out of here, the baby. No, no, get out. All the animals are going crazy today. Be gone, Kevin, be gone. The fish are thriving in here. Oh my gosh, they're just jumping in the water. Good thing it's really shallow. Dude just ran right through there and she just jumped in it. All right, guys, that's it. I'm sick of these goats. Time to do some drastic measures. First, I'm going to let these guys in here. Come on, come back inside. Come on. All right, you get in there. No, the baby, you stay out. This little man's... Ah! Dude scratched me real good just there. Boy scratched me real good just there, didn't he? Didn't he, the baby? Got me real good. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on back, the baby. Come on. Come on back. Don't you want to keep fighting? It's embarrassing to have to explain these to people. But look, guys, we finally have pecans coming from this tree. Okay, I fixed this fence again, but we really need to put some actual panels on here. So these guys don't keep breaking out. But I'm planning to rehome these guys just like I rehomed the geese to a lovely home. As you can see, Donald Trump, Obama, and their baby are thriving in my buddy's private pond. They have infinite food, water, and fresh grass to eat. And I saw tons of little fish that they can also hunt. What is this, you guys? Also, can somebody in the comments tell me what this is? I think it's some kind of egg sack, and these were everywhere around the pond. Here's another one for reference. And now that I finally figured out how to use the sprinkler system again, I say give me one or two weeks before all this stuff is looking decent again. And because the geese are gone, I should be able to take care of this water a little bit better. Also, for some reason, my chickens will get stuck in here, and they won't know how to get out. So I have to scare them out of here so they don't die from heat exhaustion. Good morning, Pap Twick. As you can see, his head is much better now, and he's very happy. Oh, a nice big rig. I walked around with him for about two hours last night while I was checking on all the sprinklers. It took a while. And the foxes are also doing very well. Pretty soon, though, we are going to have to start teaching them how to eat live food, which is going to be sad. I'm probably not going to film a lot of that. So I'm going to be starting them off with small things like quail and ideally rats that we catch on the property. And I'm sure we'll be able to catch tons, but if we can't catch any, I'm probably going to need to go buy some. And that will be essential for me to be able to release them because if they don't live hunt, they're just going to die in the wild or go up to people's doors 
stores and look for cat food. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and disinfect my cuts from the baby. Oh, nothing like driving to Bellmead, Texas. <laughs> Why is the GPS taking me here? Right off the bat, there's a cat, and that's probably what happened to the owl. Man, those people were cool. They gave me a tour of their house. From what I understand, we get more calls from the city, not just because there's more people, but because there's more incidents that occur between people's animals and wildlife. As you can see, here's the little garbanzo beans, by the way. 90% of these animals that are orphaned or injured are injured because of people or their animals are probably getting hit by a car. Something related to the city. Now, other people make the argument, hey, why are you doing wildlife rehab? Shouldn't you just let nature take its course? And I understand that argument completely. And for a while, I thought the same. But people only end up finding these animals in the city where they're getting attacked by dogs, cats, and cars. So I think as a part of stewarding our natural resources well, I think it's almost necessary to help out the animals that have been orphaned or injured because of human intervention. But okay, I'm gonna take this adorable little precious injured creature. All right, everybody, I'm talking quietly because this little fella is very clearly injured. At the very least, a little bit dehydrated. As you can tell, this is not normal wild owl behavior. And then we're gonna take him right to all things wild so we can get an x-ray on him because I don't know what's wrong with him, honestly. He might just be dehydrated. So Uncle Ben's gonna take him down to all things wild and we're gonna show you guys exactly what they would do. And we'll get some hands-on experience doing the fluid injection because they can do a better job and they have all of their permits. Okay, I just drove about an hour and a half to transport this little guy to all things wild. And I just got some news that filming the animals that are currently under my rehab or care might not be allowed under Texas's provision. But this would also mean that every rehab with a social media account is breaking the law. Having said that, there's not a single rehab facility that I know of that doesn't post videos on their Facebook or Instagram. And because nobody gets government funding, I don't know what other way people would go about getting donations. And technically this little guy isn't under my permit. He's just a little owl that's injured that I'm transporting. So I can film him legally all I want. The thing is though, I shouldn't be able to film the foxes anymore or the injured hawks that we've brought in after they're admitted to the facility which really just doesn't make any sense. But I want you guys to know and understand that I don't do this because I want to get the views and the click. That's what Big Outs, Kevin, and the Capybaras are for. If I wanted to farm views or clicks, I would just go out there and fight Kevin every day. Or the baby. Look at this cringe, ah, uh -uh, Cappy. Oh, sweet wampum. Look how beautiful this man is. You see, guys, I could just post hours of this and make money on YouTube. We certainly don't need to be filming animals being euthanized. Oh my goodness, look at this bed. Oh. In fact, I actually get less views when I show you guys hawks with broken wings. And more views when Big Ounce drinks a Grimace shake. But anyways, I'm here now. I'm going to take this little guy in there so he can get the good care that he needs. And we should be getting a provision from Parks and Wildlife hopefully soon where we'll be able to continue to educate people and film these videos. But this is the routine procedure for examining a new patient. Hair looks good. First, we check the eyes and the dilation of the pupils. Then we check the mouth to make sure there's no blood or parasites or any signs of poison. And then we check the spine and the wings for any signs of bruises, bumps, or breaks. Also, 90% of the birds that come in are presumed to be dehydrated just from the stress of bringing them in alone. And then we inject some isofluids with a little bit of vitamin B under his skin, and that absorbs straight into his body. And this is the fastest way to rehydrate any bird, mammal, or reptile. We then put her in a nice warm, dark area where she can rehydrate and regain her strength. Please pray for her. Also, I stayed to help them fix their washing machine because I was the only big boy around. And this is the little nursery where all the orphan mammals and baby birds live. Look at these little skunks. Having a functioning washing machine is vital for a rehab because they need to be able to wash the poop off the towels so they can reuse them. Even though I still have to edit and post today, I filmed this today, I still ended up staying to clean a few of these enclosures. This little injured hawk that really did not like me. That's what a kite sounds like, but I had to move this guy into a new enclosure and then clean all of his poo-poos out of there. And just to clarify, these are not pets. These are wild animals, and I'm showing you guys that there's a lot of work that goes into taking care of these things, and it's not like having a pet. Just to give you guys a dose of realism, because a lot of you guys in the DMs and comments really want to do what I do. Here's the hawk from the other day that we got the chance to put some more fluids in. 50% of the animals that come into the rehab do not make it out. These animals are coming in after getting hit by cars and attacked by other animals. And sadly, the break was so bad for the last hawk that it couldn't have been fixed and he had to be euthanized. Also, here's a little skunk with hip dysplasia that came in. But also, I need to tell you guys that if you want to be a rehabber, and a lot of you do because you email and DM me all the time, this is what it is. And even though it's sad and you have to be able to euthanize animals at times, the 50% that do make it make it all worth it to me. But a lot of people get into this with unrealistic expectations and then they get immediately burned out and they have to euthanize animals and they get depressed. And this is why I've said the women that work here have my utmost respect because they do 
do this every day, all day. But I think it's absolutely necessary to photograph and document what they're doing, not only to educate people, but also to garner support and donations. Boy, I'ma make you pay for what you did to them capybara. Get back here, boy, I'ma make you pay. And what's funny is I actually treated a kitten with the same issue in the old videos, but you don't need a permit for them. Look at those little toe beans. And also this is their pre-release flight pen for their doves. We're gonna need to make something similar to this because we're gonna get a lot of doves. And I also adopted about 15 domestic ducks from them so that they can focus on the wildlife. But none of these animals would be alive if it wasn't for the hard work of these rehabbers and the people bringing them in. And this is an educational ambassador, so I actually can kiss and film with him. He's mostly blind. And I took these ducks to my buddy's lake as well, and they're all going to be very happy here with Donald Trump and Obama. But that's it for now, you guys. I'm not exactly sure 100% what we're going to be doing from now on when it comes to filming the wildlife. But what's nice is that I'll always be able to film this adorable little creature. And if we lose our permits, I'm just going to become a villain and start hoarding lemurs. <laughs> because we don't need any permits for that. Or maybe I'll just get 50 crocodiles. <laughs> And 14 Eurasian eagle owls. And Kodamundis and Kinkajous. African shoebill stork. A literal zebra. A baby bison or a water buffalo. Or maybe an adult bull elk. Also, I don't need permits for the world's largest bird. Oh, sweet wampum. Look at those folds. Heck, I might even just start farming alligators. Because <laughs> that's actually a much easier permit to get. At least with that, you don't have to pass a test, take any courses, or get mentored. But I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for watching. Watching my video. Again, I don't ask for donations for my rescue because these YouTube videos help provide everything we need. But All Things Wild doesn't have that luxury and if you guys have it in your heart to provide for them and they need a lot of help and resources because they get tons of animals every day. So I put a little donation link at the bottom for All Things Wild. Any of the money that you guys send them just goes straight to the little baby fawns and the kites and all the different hawks and things. And it goes towards paying the people that stay up all night bottle feeding squirrels throughout the night. And they get paid a lot less than I do. So love you guys. Appreciate you. Thanks so much for watching these videos and we'll see you in the next video oh i almost forgot to tell you hey!